Hi guys, this is Ravenclaw What If. Welcome back to another What If story. Now, before we get into this, I don't know, I don't know how long this, this part's going to be, so it might be around 20 minutes. In the next part, I'll probably try to make it longer, but we'll, we'll see how long this um, part is. Izuku had a normal life. Until the tragic day that will change Izuku and Inko's life forever. After after the trip to the Cork Doctor, the Cork Doctor informed Inko that her son has a um, dragon bone cork. Inko was excited that her son has a cork. Her son, on the other hand, didn't really didn't really see sorry didn't really seem excited about it. Izuku has always been a quiet boy, not showing a whole lot of emotions, never really caring about heroes. Inko and Asashi agreed that their son needs to spend more time with his father, Asashi, basically. Spend more time with his father overseas in America. Inko was in tears. She's never been away from... Her son for more than five minutes before. Inko has always been overprotective over her son. He's never, he's never been to an actual school. He's been homeschool majority of his life. Unfortunately, Izuku and his father never made it to the airport. The heroes and the and the police officers found Asashi's um, found Asashi dead. And his and her son missed him from a villain attack. Inko was heartbroken of the death of her husband and and her son missing. Instead of falling in despair, that was replaced with desire to find her son. She de she dedicated her life, well, de oh, dedicated her time becoming a pro hero. As she's trying to find her missing son, she was placed. After getting a hero license, she was placed under Ryoko as her sidekick. Over the years, they slowly started to become friends. Mirko took a liking to Inko. She admires the woman's drive. Mirko and Enrico were taken back by Inko's story about losing her husband and, and her missing son. Mirko and Enrico promised Inko that they would help her. In her quest to find her son, in, in in any way they they can. They were unaware that the people that were responsible for her husband's death was not a villain attack. It was the handiwork of the safety com the safety committee. The moment that the safety committee got their hands on Izuku, they wiped, like they wiped, his memories of his past life. He was placed. He was placed under Lady Nagant's care and tutelage. Lady Nagant knew that the safety committee was going to. Sorry, guys. Here we go again. Lady Nagant. Lady Nagant knew that that the safety committee was going to do with the boy, and she didn't like it one bit. She she didn't desire to see this young boy turn into a merciless, emotionless killer. She. She grew to care for the boy like like he was her own son. The moment she betrayed the safety committee, she took Izuku and ran. Izuku has always done what Lady Nagant says without question. As, he, as Izuku and Lady Nagant jumping off rooftop to rooftop, trying to escape the safety committee ag agents. Izuku, listen to me. I'm going to draw them away while you escape. I can't do that, mother. Listen to me. I will always... Sorry. I... Listen to me. I will not allow them to get their hands on you. Remember what I taught you, my adorable son. I have taught you everything for you to, sur to survive. As Lady Nagant gives her adopted son a... A tight hug. Don't give me that look, Yuzuku. I'll be fine. Your mother's no slouch. As Lady Gott hands over some sort of envelope filled with money, 
this should be enough for you for you for a while remember don't stay in one place for very long you're not coming back are you mom if i'm able to i will but you know the safety committee operate operation all well, you know the safety committee i won't let those bastards get their hands on you your safety is my main priority also almost forgot to give you this this is your new ID with, with, with your new alias. When things die down, promise me you'll live a normal, a live, oh sorry, you live as a normal kid. You're quite young. I promise, Mom. That's a good boy. Now get out of here and live a normal life. As he, as he could climbs down the fire escape when he finally get into the alleyway, a second later, he heard a he heard a rifle shot as he glanced back at the roof the uh, rooftops. As he clenches his fists, I'll find you one day, Mom. Just don't die. Unfortunately, she was caught by some heroes before the safety committee could uh, um, terminate her. As she was processed and sent to Tartarus prison, as Inko was was the one who captured her. As a year has passed, as Izuku has officially turned 15 years old, as Izuku started to attend, attend school, not staying in, in one school for very long, transfer, transfer to transfer to different schools, just to make sure the safety committee doesn't uh, notice him or find his location. As Deku's first day at a new school, he's never stayed in, well, one spot very long, like I said before. Everyone, take your seat. We're having a new transfer student. Miss um Miss Ashido. Yes, Sensei? I would like you I would like you to show him around school. Of course, Sensei. I, I, I would love to. Good. As the door opens to the classroom, as everyone sees the new student walk in, please in, in introduce yourself to the class. Understood, Sensei. My name is Kira Rosefield. It's a pleasure to meet you all. You can you can take a seat right next to Miss uh, Mina over there. As the teacher point out who Mina was, as Izuku walks up to the desk, as he sits right next to Mina. Hi there, cutie. I'm Mina Ashida. Very very nice to meet you, Mina. I'm Kira. Why don't you why don't you take um young Rosefield and show him around school? Of course, Sensei. Come on, Kara. Very well. As Mina shows Deku around the school, where the library is and the cafeteria and so on. As we cut to the lunch period, as Kara, as Kara sees the cafeteria filled with students, as he sees several students giving Mina a hard time bullying, well, pretty pretty much bullying her. Leave me alone. That's not going to happen, freak. People like you don't belong here. As he was about to strike Mina across the face, as Mina closed her eyes, expecting to get hit across the face, when nothing happened, as she opens her eyes, seeing Kara holding onto the bully's fist, who the fuck are you? I, I suggest you leave her alone. What are you, some sort of freak lover? As the bully used his opposite hand to strike Izuku across the face, the moment that his fist made contact with Izuku's skin, as everyone hears, well, as everyone hears the, the bully scream out in pain, as the moment his hand hit hit physical contact from Izuku's face, as his bone shatters, as Kira grabs the bully by the throat, lifts him up in the air, people like you don't deserve to live. As he lifts him up in the air, well. As he lifts a hand over his, as he feels a hand over his wrist, as he looks, looks over to Mina, stop Kara, you're going to kill him, he's not worth it. Why are you protecting this scum? Why are you protecting, why are you, sorry, why are you protecting scum like this? I'm not protecting him, I'm trying to stop you from doing something you regret later. 
I know I don't know you very well, Kara, but I could tell you're genuinely a, a kind person. The fact that you, the fact that you stick up for me. Please, Kara. Fine. Listen closely, you waste of space. If you ever glance at Nina, I'll finish what I started. As he drops the bully on the ground. As he gasps for air. What's everyone staring at? Mind your own fucking business. As Mina grabs Kara's hand. What are you doing, Mina? Let's get out of here. I no longer want to eat lunch. I'm sorry. I no longer want to eat my lunch in the cafeteria. As Mina and Deku sits uh, underneath a tree to eat their lunch. As Mina co continues to stare at, at Kara. Do I have something on my face? As Mina re... As Mina reaches to grab a piece of uh, grain of rice off of Kira's face from the rice ball, he, the rice ball he just he just ate. Kira, close your eyes. Why, Mina? You're going to have to close your eyes to find out. Fine. As Kira closes his eyes, as Mina kisses um, Kira on the cheek. Why did you do that? I simply wanted to thank you for for sticking up for me. No one has ever done that for me outside of my best friend, Kirishima. I have decided. Decide on what, Mina? That me and you are going to be good friends. We should probably get going. We're going to be late, we're going to be late for class. As he, as he do, well, as Kira continue his daily life, well, Izuku is his real name, but he's using Kara as an alias, like I said before. As Izuku continues his daily life, going to school, and spending and spending more time with Mina. As the safety committee has been keeping an eye on Izuku, until one day Mina never showed up for, showed up to school. When he was walking home from, when he was walk, sorry, when he was walking home from, from school, uh, I I got that um. Get rid of that. Give me a second, guys. When he was walking walking home from school, as he sees a letter pinned to his front door, as he opens the letter, as he reads it, as the letter is telling him to um, go to his location or the girl will die, as he as he's crumples up the paper in his hands, fucking safety committee, they're going to regret bringing Mina in, into this. As Dizuku grabs his duffel bag, plays several military grade equipment, a miniature sized rocket launcher, flashbangs, and several frag grenades. As Dizuku sees a car in the alleyway, well, on the side of the street. As Dizuku gets in the passenger seat, the passenger seat, seat. As he pulls a gun to the civilian's head, drive. Well, he didn't actually say that. Let me go back. Well, what I was going to say. Nothing personal. Drive as Izuku points the gun at the man's head. Drive to the location. Don't try anything funny or I'll... Or you eat... Or you will eat lead. Please, don't kill me. Then drive. I do apologize for this. As Izuku gets out of the car, I suggest you get out of here. As the car peels off... Sir, we... As we cut to the safety committee, where Mina is being held, sir, we got the girl. Once you once you require the package, leave no witnesses. Understood, sir. Why are you doing this? I haven't done anything wrong. Nothing personal. Nothing personal, girl. We only want the boy. No, you've been. You're quite close to, to him. What do you want with Kara? Kara, is it? Well, that's a... So that's... So that's the alias he's been going by. What do you mean by that? That's not the boy's true name. Bly phone and gag the girl. Knowing the boy, he should be here soon. As immediately, a flashbang... Well, a flash... Well, flashbang... Comes through the window, blinding everyone in the room. As the door to the abandoned building flies off, 
hitting, well, flying off the hinges and hitting, hitting the wall inside the building. Immediately, bone spikes flying through the room, killing several of the safety community agents. Without warning, a bone tail from Izuku's, from Izuku's back pierced one of the safety committee through the chest as he, as he gets pinned to the wall, as Izuku snaps his neck. As he grabs the last safety community, um, safety committee agent by the face, as he begins to crush in his skull in his hands, as blood splatter all, all over Izuku's face. As Izuku drops him to the ground, as his hands begin to form bone-like claws, as he begins shredding every, every safety committee agent that wasn't dead in the room, as blood splatter all around the abandoned building. As Izuku picks up one of the earpieces from the safety committee, place it in his ear. Status report. They're all dead. I'm coming for you next. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Your deaths won't be quick. As Izuku takes the communicator from his ear as he crushes it. Mina, are you alright? Where are you, Kira? I can't see anything. As Izuku unbinds her as... As he carries her bridal style outside of the building, as he takes the blindfold, as he, you know, he takes the blindfold off her, as he sits her on the ground. What's going on, Kara? Why are these people after you? The less you know, the better. The less you know, the better you be off. You're covered in blood. Are you hurt? It's not my blood, Mina. I might not be hurt, but they will be. I should have taken care of them a long time ago. I should have known that. I should have known better that they would never leave me alone. I'm sorry you were dragging you were dragging into this, Mina. You've been a very good friend to me. I'm glad we've met, Mina. But this is where we say our goodbyes. What do you mean, Kara? You're starting to scare me. As he places his hand over Mina's cheek. You've been a very you've been very good to me, Mina. This is where we're this is where we're gonna to have to say goodbye. Unlike me, you have a future. I know one day you'll be a great hero. Goodbye, my friend. As bone dragon wings pop out of Izuku's back, as he jumps up onto the the side of the wall, using his claws that he formed over his hands digging into the pavement or the cement that's the wall pavement basically what I'm trying to say <laughs> he pretty much jump on the wall using bone claws as he climbs up as he climbs up digging his um, bone claws in, in, in into the cement Kara wait when me when Mina finally look up to the building where where he was where he was climbing, she couldn't find any trace of Kira. As he as he was standing on top of the building, staring down the headquarters of the safety committee, as he takes a duffel bag off his back, as he places it on the ground of the the roof of the building that he's he's on. As he pulls out a um, major sized rocket launcher. As he takes aim, and immediately everyone hears the loud explosions hitting the safety committee headquarters. Immediately, bones start to form on Izuku's body. Well, let me try that again. Bones start to form on Izuku's body, covering his and his entire body. Basically, I'm trying to say. When his transformation is complete. As you see a good sized bone dragon jumping off the roof, landing onto the street. The moment he landed on, well, the moment he landed on the street from the impact, as the ground cracks, immediately the dragon opens his mouth as the black fire starts to shoot out, hitting the safety community headquarters. 
several safety committee agents come out rushing to confront Izuku. As Steki begins slaughtering, slaughtering them, showing them no mercy. As charred bodies scattered all across the street. At the safety committee, reinforcements finally came in. As the Bone Dragon Deku, Bone Dragon Deku shoved his tail into the ground, several bone spikes shoot out from the ground, impaling half of the re uh, the reinforcements. As several bone spikes shoot out of his dragon body, killing the rest of them. Think I've done enough damage for now. It's only a matter of time before the heroes show up. Hear me well, safety committee. I will postpone your slaughter, but be warned. Your time on this earth will be will soon come to an end. Enjoy what time you have left. As the drag as immediately Izuku charged up a fire blast from his mouth in his dragon state. His bone dragon state. Will be, I'll be I will be referring that as um, dragon armor from 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 now on. As he creates a loud explosion, as as he disappears from view, as the blown bone dragon armor begins to fade away, as Seku sticks his hands in his pockets, as he begins walking through the alleyway, as the news of the safety committee being attacked spread like wildfire. As we cut to UA, as Nazu gather a group of heroes, I expect you all heard the news. The safety committee was attacked. As the razor head, well, sorry, as the razor heads in the room with the rest of the heroes, was it a villain attack, sir? It's a possibility, but I don't have enough information, a razor head. Whatever. Whoever is responsible for this is quite powerful. Mirko, Inko, and Ryuku, I want you three to track, track down who, who is responsible for this and bring him in. I have a few questions for whoever, for whoever who, who did this. Yes, sir. As a few weeks has passed, Deku transfers to safe house to safe house. As he's standing on top of a building, staring down at the city. As Deku looks up in the sky, as as it's a it's a full moon, clear spot, clear skies. I know you're there, Hawks. Hey, kid, it's been a while. What do you want, Hawks? Nothing personal. The safety committee has ordered me to take you down. As much as I do, I do not want to do it. I have my orders. I see you're still their dog. You know you can't beat me, Hawks. If you fight me, I will kill you. I will not show any mercy to anyone that's part of that safety committee. You people don't deserve any mercy. You're nothing but killers. Unlike you, Hawks, I will not be controlled, nor be used to kill innocent people. If I have to walk in, if I have to walk in miles of blood, so be it. Out of respect for my mother, Lady Nagant, I'll make your death quick. And then, when I'm done with you, I'll finish what I started. As Hawk shoots out several feathers, as Deku shoots out several bone spikes, as both attacks get, reflect, get reflected from each other, as Deku creates a bone orb, as he throws it at Hawks, immediately when the bone orb gets close enough to Hawks, immediately... Several bone, bone spikes shoot out of the orb. As Hawks takes flight to invade the attack. As a bone spear shoots past Hawks' head. Piercing his cheek as blood trails down onto his face. As Hawks... As Hawks shoots out several feathers at Deku. As Deku creates another spear as he reflects the um, feathers each time each time they clash they would cancel each other out 
leaving no clear winner. As Deku, as Bone, well, Bone Dragon Wings pop out of Izuku's back. As the wings pierce the ground, immediately several Bone Spears shoot out of the ground. Shooting at Hawks. As Hawks dodges and weaves. Then Hawks screams out in pain. As one of the Bone Spears hit his um, one, one of his shoulders. As Deku jumps up in the air and kicks Hawks in the side of the head. As he goes flying down to the ground. While in midair, Deku slams a Bone Spear right in his opposite shoulder. As Bone starts to gather, oh, Bone starts to form around Deku's knuckles. As he begins to repeatedly beat Hawks in the face. The moment he was about to strike the killing blow. Immediately he gets kicked as he goes flying off the roof. As he lands on his feet. As he looks up up to see pro hero Mirako with, with a cocky grin on her face. What are you doing here Mirako? I think you would be nice if, um, I think you would be nice, you oversized chicken. Who's the green, who's the green hair kid? Safety committee business, stay out of it. Whatever's going on here, I'm not going to allow you to kill the boy. I know how, the, I know how the safety committee operates. I thought I pulled out the bone spear from his shoulder. It's not like I want to, Mirko. I have, I have, I have a kill order. He's too dangerous to be left alive. Are you serious? He doesn't look like more than 15, 15 or 14 years old. Or 14 or 15 years old. I, I suggest you run back to your safety committee. We're, we're taking him alive. What do you mean we? If my hunch is correct, that kid was most likely the one that attacked the safety committee. Nezu has ordered me, Inko, and Ryoko to bring him in. Nezu wants to speak with him. I see. I'm outnumbered here. I'll withdraw for now. Be careful. Izuku is not to be trifled with. What did you say? As Hawks has a confused expression on his face. Did I hear you right? Did I hear you say Izuku? Yeah. Like I said, be careful with with that one. As Hawks flies away. He's quite injured, but he still can fly. As two heroes block his path, Ryoko blocking from the front, as Inko is blocking him from the back. Surrender, kid, you can't escape. Surrender, kid, you can't escape. You're surrounded. We'll see about that, hero. I don't want to hurt you, kid. As Izuku pulls out a bone, a bone, a bone sword out of his hand. As Deku rushes towards Ryoko, as he swings his sword, bone sword, at towards you know Ryoko, as she ducks underneath it, barely missing her head. As Deku kicks Ryoko, as she goes flying, slamming into a dumpster. As Deku rushes past, past her, past her to um to escape. Inko, follow him. I'll be right behind you. Got, uh, got it, Ryoko. As she uses her telekinesis, moving several vehicles to block his path. As Deku turns around to, to face the pro hero. The moment Inko saw his face, as her eyes widen, It can't be Izuku? I finally found you. How do you know that name, hero? It's me, your mother. I would recognize you anywhere. A mother, all, a mother would always recognize her son. I don't know who you are, but you're not my mother. The only person, the, sorry, the only woman I call mother, she's sitting in Tartar's prison at the moment. As Deku says this with emotion ex expression. After all these years, you haven't changed a bit, Izuku. Yeah, she's about to rush her to give him a hug as he jumps backwards. As the two heroes finally catch up. Please surrender. I do not want to hurt you, son. So you, so you can throw me in Totter's prison, uh, prison? 
I don't think so. Listen, kid. You're not going to get out of, out, out of this unscathed. Make it easy for yourself. As Miracle pretty much ordered. <laughs> pretty much Miracle this. We're not here to send you to Tartar's prison. Nezzy would like to have a word with you. It seems that I am outnumbered here. But if I get any inkling that you plan to send me to Tartar's prison, I'll kill you all. And that's pretty much where we're going to leave it off. Hope you guys have a good night and day, judging by time zones, and I'll catch you in the next video.